Thank you for the intro, and I also thank Sages for uh, letting me give this talk. Um, so I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about really motor skill assessment. I don't have any disclosures for this particular talk. So it starts with minimal invasive surgery. Uh, really, it's changed the game in terms of how we approach surgery, but also surgical training and assessment. Uh, really, the see one, do one, teach one method that used to apply uh, may not be ideal anymore. And ultimately, uh, this change in paradigm has really spawned a lot of development for surgical simulators, both virtual and physical. The most common of which, of course, is the fundamentals of laparoscopic surgery uh, simulator, which many of you are familiar with. It's been thoroughly validated and tested as an effective training and teaching mechanism uh, for technical motor skills that also lead to surgical skill retention. Um, now, it's not a perfect system. Uh, you know, many of these metrics utilize performance time and registered errors, which are really task endpoints as major criteria uh, and have been reported to have poor iterator reliability. This may lead to trainees that are focusing on maximizing speed for these particular tasks, which ultimately lead to negative patient outcomes. Uh, and ultimately, different surgical techniques and different physicians, for example, have completely different approaches on how they want to do a particular procedure, have the same patient outcomes, but vastly different performance scores. So um, really, I thought, OK, well, we need to be like Neo from the Matrix. We've got to go back to the source. Uh, and what I'm talking about in this case, the source is the brain. So now that we know we want to do that, how do we, how do we get there? Uh, the first thing is we need to pick an imaging method. Now, there's a couple different types. There's MRI, PET, EEG. Uh, when it comes to surgical tasks, if you want to measure it in real time, if you want to have a high enough depth penetration so you're able to uh, measure cortical depth along with uh, high temporal resolution, really infrared spectroscopy is the way to go. Uh, and there's multiple uh, publications that support this. So now that we picked uh, infrared spectroscopy, where do we look? Um, really, there's three regions that we're interested in uh, regarding uh, surgical motor skills specifically. The first is the prefrontal cortex, uh, then is the primary motor cortex, and then finally the supplementary motor area. All of these three areas have been uh, studied extensively to be uh, highly important when it comes to not only task performance, but also motor skill learning. So really, there's three goals for this study. Um, first of all, can we use infrared spectroscopy, FNIRS for short, to objectively differentiate surgical motor skills in real time? Can we also use it to classify experts and novice groups? Um, and then finally, you know, is this, is this a better approach? Is this better than what's already out there? Is this more accurate than established metrics? So to do this, we basically recruited several residents uh, that were both in the novice group and also the expert group with varying degree of uh, laparoscopic procedures uh, to make sure that all of our data is not biased for handedness, everybody's right-handed, and we asked them all to essentially perform five pattern-cutting tasks with trials in between. And uh, I don't want to go too much into the details of the, the engineering behind it, um, but we're really using a commercial system that's in collaboration with uh, the Martino's Imaging Center. Uh, and a host of data pro processing that has been very well uh, published um, regarding infrared spectroscopy and also classification methods. So first we start with our baseline, the FLS task performance scores. Um, as we expect, there's a clear dif differentiation when it comes to task performance scores. Uh, but when we go down to the classification model, um, that's when it, it starts to have fairly poor mm -hmm. results. Uh, up to almost 67% of uh, misclassification error for any new user that claims to have a particular score, for example. And again, if we try to validate this model, uh, we see the same concept with some fairly high misclassification errors, even though it passed a statistical test. Uh, then we go into really our approach for brain imaging. So there's eight specific regions that we're looking at. Uh, and so to make sure we're comparing apples to apples, we're only looking at for novices and experts in all of the regions for the prefrontal cortex, the primary motor cortex, and the SMA. And really, we see significant decreases in functional activation for experts in all of the prefrontal cortex regions, uh, two of the primary motor cortex regions, and then also the supplementary motor area. 
Um, but again, this is really a univariate analysis. Uh, to be more robust, we need to move on to a multivariate classification approach. Um, so I'm using linear discriminant analysis for this, which is very well established. And really, uh, just by looking at functional activation alone, uh, we're able to classify surgical experts and novices based on their functional activation with a very low misclassification error. Uh, and then we cross-validate this model uh, to see if this still holds up with any new data or if we remove this, you know, any existing data in our pool. And the validation results uh, are, are pretty promising, too. Um, we have incredibly low uh, misclassification errors uh, th through and through. So just for a visual depiction, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, basically, when we have our infrared system essentially imaging uh, cortices in real time, generally you're going to see an increased prefrontal cortex activation for novices. Um, as novices essentially start to undergo motor scale learning and they start to cross over into the expert pool, we'll have a significantly higher primary motor cortex and supplementary motor area activation. Um, and really, uh, this is... It's not surprising. This is something that's already been established in the literature, but I think for the first time we're able to quantify this in real time. Oh. So what does this all mean? Uh, really, this is the first study to objectively differentiate and classify surgical skills with a high specificity to three cortical regions. Uh, it's able, we're able to differentiate surgical motor skills in the prefrontal cortex, supplementary motor area, and left medial primary motor cortex. On top of that, we're also able to classify subjects based off of their cortical activation into expert or novice groups with a very low misclassification error. Uh, now, does that mean this is going to take over and be the new FLS? I don't think so. Uh, there's still a long ways to go from there. There needs to be a lot of repeatability studies to, to really form any sort of formative uh, conclusion. So where do we go from here? Well, we really covered the two extremes, novices and experts. But what about everything in between? Uh, and that's actually a follow-up study that we're doing uh, right now, where we're taking a bunch of medical students, training them on a, a basic FLS task, for example, and then uh, you know, studying the relative change of cortical activation as they sort of transgress from a novice to an expert. Uh, but what about other metrics? I mean, motor skill alone isn't just what defines a good surgeon. What about decision making? Uh, what about uh, stress physiology? All of these concepts, uh, you know, we believe can be, can be measured in real time with, uh, with brain activation. So there's a lot of future work uh, that can be uh, taken from this work. And uh, I think that is about it. I'd like to acknowledge uh, a lot of my collaborators and my team and happy to have any questions. Is there any questions from the floor? Well, I have a question. It's fascinating work. Um, I would ask if you've studied any correlation with success of skill completion as opposed to just whether they're novice or expert, because obviously an expert can have an error in an FLS task, mm -hmm. and similarly a, a novice may have success. Um, is there any correlation? Have you noted that? Yeah, so really this, it's, this is very sort of brand new in terms of the research field. Um, our benchmark was the FLS task, and so we're using metrics that were uh, undisclosed from the SAGES committee. Now, is that you know, all we need to use? Absolutely not. Uh, so I think to sort of answer your question, yeah, I think we need to see if there's any correlation with functional activation to actual patient outcomes you know, or any sort of other uh, motor end effectors that define a success outcome. Um, that hasn't been looked at yet, but I think it's very promising. Great. Well, thank you very much.